Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another one of the hilarious Salmonella Academy's videos. This one is on why the chicken got domesticated. This one was also heavily requested. I'm curious as to why, but let's watch it and find out. Hey kids, whenever I browse this site, I see more and more videos of people talking about things like YouTuber drama, the election, world politics, and it made me think, hey, maybe I should start covering more relevant, nuanced topics in my videos. Anyway, let's talk about chickens. So the story of the chick- <laughs> Sure, why not? <laughs> begins a long time ago in Southeast Asia. Now, this area had a ton of bamboo growing all over the place. And the thing about bamboo is, it follows a very specific life cycle, where once every 50 years or so, every bamboo plant in a given region will blossom at the exact same time. Did you know that nuclear fuel assemblies actually kind of look like those clusters of bamboo? And they're all individual pellets fed into those little stacks, and they're cladded in a zirconium alloy, which is highly resistant to high temperatures and pressures. No, fuel assemblies are not those green glowy things that you may have seen from TV shows like The Simpsons. And shortly after, they litter the whole area with these little seeds known as bamboo rice, or as I call hmm. them, bambinos. These pellets get... <laughs> bambinos. Like Babe Ruth, the great Bambino. The current bamboo dies out, and the cycle starts over. Now, enter the ancestor of the domesticated chicken, known as the Red Jungle Fowl. The Jungle Fowl lived in the same area as the bamboo, and, as you can imagine, they got a lot of benefit out of being literally knee-deep in food once every half century. So much sure. so, that evolution basically said, all right. <laughs> I like the DNA man as evolution. That, that, is, that is really, really cool. By the way, how uh, radiation affects the body, that is when an, a type of ionizing radiation, such as an alpha particle or beta particle, hits those d DNA strands and splits them in half. These double strand breakages are what radiation, what ionizing radiation can do to your cells in high doses. It can be recovered from them, but if it's too much, if it affects too many cells, you can have abnormal cell developments, it could regenerate wrong, and then you can end up with cancerous cells. But that's, that's the harmful effects as what radiation actually does to you on a microscopic level. On a macroscopic level, it can burn you. When food supplies go up, I want you to just start pumping out babies like there's no tomorrow. That way, we can take as much advantage of each bloom as possible. As a result, the chicken population became synchronized oh, with wow. bamboo, shooting up during blooms and dwindling, dwindling in between. Then That's fascinating. It's actually kind of like a regular uh, refueling cycle at a nuclear plant. You have, uh, except I guess it would be flipped because the nuclear plant would be on at 100% power and then you have those like little green bars would be the refueling periods every 18 to 24 months but it's a pretty regular schedule so I guess you can say nuclear reactors are the inverse of chicken populations. Humans showed up and they saw this pattern and they said wow how bamboozling and then they realized <laughs> wait a minute that pun was dumb but also we can hardly- No it wasn't puns are amazing. <laughs> chicken cycle thing. All we have to do is give these guys a whole bunch of food and we can make their reproductive systems go into overdrive whenever we want. Do you know what that means? Lots of hot bird porn. No, it means we get as many eggs as we could ever dream of. There you so, go. With a bit of work, we managed to domesticate the chicken <laughs> the leashes. BC. And as you can imagine, the idea of having a literal egg laying machine around the house was extremely popular, leading to the chicken spreading across the entirety of the civilized world over the course of a few millennia. I think it's interesting that, despite the fact that the West has had chickens for most of its history, it wasn't until way later that we figured out where they came from. Like, all right, man, it's time to delve into the world of the unknown. We're gonna see things. I like that he goes in for this scene, he, he puts the effort to uh, make a green background. I, I love it. <laughs> it's the likes of which man has never laid eyes upon before. But if you keep your wits about you, we just might make it out of here alive. Hey, uh, is this, this yours? No. Weird.
What the hell? Of course, having a constant <laughs> uh, get getting swarmed by chickens. Supercharged uterus is not without its drawbacks. After all, the chicken essentially goes through its entire menstrual cycle every day. So next time your girlfriend's complaining about that's fascinating. I di I didn't know that about chickens, but yeah, if you go through that entire, I guess that makes sense with how often you get eggs. Cool. How bad her period is? Get her a box of chocolates and be generally attentive to her needs. You prick. And there you go, yeah. Always, always be nice. Always be nice to your partner, your spouse, whenever they need it. I mean, that's, that's a good lesson to live by there. Didn't expect it on this channel, but hey. <laughs> by one thing with chickens and most other egg-laying critters is that they only have one hole in their pelvic region, which is called a cloaca, I think. Or cloaca. Huh. So the Croatia basically <laughs> acts like a funnel, taking all the eggs and waste and sending it down the same chute. And while this might sound convenient at first, there is one fatal disadvantage that affects chickens in particular. Sometimes the egg can get stuck on its way out, leading to a condition known as egg binding. And since this means nothing can exit the clamato anymore, the egg-bound chicken ends up dying of constipation. Of oh no, no, that's... Not good. Uh, fortunately, uh, liquid waste systems uh, do have the ability to be multi-streamed. There's a whole bunch of different tanks it can go to, but they're all uh, controlled in a radiological controlled area. Dose, dose is assessed both in the tanks and in the vicinity around the, set, the tanks, less you have something like a leak. And chemistry is continually monitored, uh, so for instance, the uh, liquid waste uh, release at, that's going on at Fukushima, it's been a very controlled, um, sought at, highly regulated process. The levels are actually below, the levels of radioactivity are below minimum requirements for what's safe. So it's really, it's really no cause for concern especially considering that there are even other nuclear plants in China that release a much bigger volume of liquid waste. That one's still not air for concern, but it's, uh, it's a bit hypocritical that China banning Japanese seafood, even though their uh, liquid waste releases are much higher. If you want to hear me talk a lot more in detail about that, I'll pin a comment down below on a video where I talk a lot more about the liquid waste discharge. The course of a couple days. Hey Jerry, how you doing? <sighs> Not good, Sean. Not good. Oh man, what's wrong? It's just... Ever since Jenny got egg bound, things have been so stressful. Her funeral expenses are through the roof, and her memory means so much to me, but if the bills keep coming in like this, I'm not sure my family will be able to handle it. This is actually really sad and humanizing for what's what I thought was a goofy video about chickens. Well, hey man, you know what they say, don't put all your eggs in one casket. Wow, all of that for setting up a pun. That's... I wonder how Sam O'Nella would do at the Punder Dome. Let's just hope she doesn't get egg-zoomed. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't ever contact me or my kids ever again. I understand. Anyway, that's all for today. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. That was a bit darker. I, I can kind of see how can, talking about chickens, regular cycles, and uh, the fact that bamboos are shaped like fuel assemblies. Okay, I, I can see some of the connection now. Thanks again for the suggestion. I, I always love Sam Manella's videos. They're really funny, though. That one got a that last joke got got a little real. I didn't realize it was that elaborate setup for a pun, but who doesn't love a good pun? I think a lot of people actually don't, but I like puns. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.